lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host, Miss Kim. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my soul, you've been so good. I gotta let the world know you took a broke down thug, scarred from sin. Wash me in your blood, now I'm new again. Now, when people see me, they say they can't be Tom. But the old man's dead, the old man's gone. I done been passed on from death to life. I know that doesn't sound right, but I've been raised with Christ. And his yoke is easy and burden is light. I ain't looking back, don't wanna be like Lot's wife. I don't have to think twice, I'ma serve Yahweh. With all my might, each and every day in the life that I live by the Son of God. And He gave me the strength to rock hard. So I'm singing these chords, slaying demons while I'm steady saying, Thank you, Lord. Hey, thank you, Lord. Oh, my soul, you've been so good. I gotta let the world know. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. You took away my sin when you hung on the tree. And thank you, Lord. Thank you for real. They whipped you and by your stripes I was healed. Mic check, one, two, one, two. Praise God, hallelujah, this is what I do. It want my life to be a servant, this is what I choose. The hood for streets of gold, so really what I lose. And really, I don't lose. And for you, I got news. That old accuser, he defeated. Got a Bible, better read it. When I was living in the dark, it was hard for me to see it. Now I'm anointed in his presence. I don't never want to leave it. Lord, I love you. I repeat it like my vocab show. Be afraid of dying if you die with no passport. Look, preach the gospel, Rim. Tell them how to save your role. Let them beat them, hang them on the cross. But my sins are yours. Thank you for my life. For the shut and open door. Thank you for my wife and my kids. But that I know we know. I love the way he hold me close, fill me with his holy gold. Ask me why I rep him like I do, bro, cause I suppose. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my soul, you've been so good. I gotta let the world know. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. You took away my sin when you hung on the tree. And thank you, Lord. Thank you for real. They whipped you and by your strength I was healed. Thank you, Lord, for the life that you've given. You died on the cross so that I can start living. When I think about the Lord. What he's done for me My soul cries hallelujah Thank God for saving me If I had 10,000 tongues It wouldn't even come close To giving you the praise you deserve Yeshua the Lord of hosts Thank you Lord Oh my soul you've been so good I gotta let the world know Thank you Lord for saving me You took away my sin when you hung
underdog like a Rocky, but still a champion. I or the tiger, I'm getting strong, and yet it's evident. When my God with me now, who can stop me better yet? I ain't mad at person yet. When the rock with me, come and flex. I just thought that, thought that you know. Come and kick it like you know. Gotta keep it with me, cause they can have it like a sumo. I'm taking off like a rocket, shooting farther than Pluto. My father, the reason I do this. And the new drum rules do summit That face mix with that hip hop And I'm a tip top position No flip flop and no pit stop Cause I'm with the rock and he with me No tip top and no switches That the top back, that the top mix Cause he rides with it, you get it, you get it When he with me, who's stopping? Underdog like a rock Taking off like a rock How's it going, guys? I know it's not Sunday, but it's still nuts. It's still great. How you guys doing? <laughs> Man, I miss you guys. I know we're a day late, but we're not a dollar short, only about 50 cents. Let's get right into it. As I always say, and I do mean it, that's the only reason I say it, I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing this for you. I'm doing this to help somebody. I do it because I care about you, and I love you, and I want to see you do better. I want to see you live better, and I just want you to be better. Is that all right with you? Because it's all right with me. Now, before we get started, I'd like to uh, add a disclaimer. Today we're going to be introducing 
um, a couple of new segments. I like to help people. I like to reach out and, and grab somebody and pull them ahead with me. And I don't want to walk alone. Nobody want to be by themselves. But sometimes when you reach back and grab somebody, you don't you don't necessarily have to, to to be rough with them, but you do have to kind of tug on them and be a little aggressive. So some people are stubborn. And so that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to be a little aggressive when I pull you to me. But I'm only pulling you closer to my heart because that's where you belong. And I'm going to help somebody. I'm going to change some lives. I'm going to turn some things around for some people today. If you don't believe me, then you're just going to have to wait and see. Now, this first new segment I'm going to introduce to you today is, well, it's a segment that I've aptly named, That's How People Get Hurt. Now, People always do things, it seems, that uh, are kind of out of life, out of key. Sometimes they do things that we don't even understand. It could be family members, could be friends, coworkers, could be strangers on the street. But we always, from time to time, seem to notice that somebody is in a situation that makes no sense. They're saying or doing things that, you know what, we just don't comprehend. What's the rationale behind it? And some people just do things that make you say, okay, now, that's how people get hurt. So here we are with the that's how people get hurt set. Here we go. Number one, that's how people get hurt. Oh, you can't pay me back my $20, but you can go get your hair weave dyed purple. That's how people get hurt. Number two, hmm. <laughs> this is a good one. You can ask me to give you a ride to work so you won't be late to your job. Then get an attitude and hand me a dollar when I ask you for some gas money. See, that's how people get hurt. Number two. Ooh, be careful what you say. Say what you mean and mean what you say on this one. Number three. Now, if I carry you to make yourself at home, but then I catch you in my refrigerator drinking Kool-Aid straight out of the jug, that's how people get hurt. Number four. Now you tell me God don't want me gambling. You preach to me. That's all you get. You, I mean, you stay on me about playing the numbers. You always constantly in my ear talk about you ain't supposed to be gambling. That's a sin. That ain't right. God don't want you gambling. But then you play my number and it hit. That's how people get hurt. Number five. Now you invite me to go out to lunch with you, and you say, order what you want. After I order what I want, you order the same thing. We eat, we laugh, we have a great time, great conversation. But then when the check comes, I give the waitress my money. You give the waitress a coupon that says, buy one, get one free. See, that's how people get hurt. Mm-hmm. Number six. Now you volunteer the dog set <laughs> for my chihuahua. Bless your heart. I didn't know you was an animal lover like that. Now you gonna care for my sweet little chihuahua dog. I can't believe that. For free. Bless your heart. But then I found out later that you've been taking my dog around fighting other little dogs. That's how people get hurt. Number seven. Oh no, this one right here. This matter of fact, this 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 right here. Yeah, yeah. This will get this will get you slapped and, 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 and kicked real quick. Yeah. Uh, n- number seven. You get rid of center my phone number as a secondary contact. See, that's how people get hurt. Lord have mercy. This one right here. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah. This will get you stabbed. Uh, number eight. You bring the Jehovah Witness over to my house. See, that's how people get hurt. And, and number nine. Now, you come over to my house in the morning, and you just pop up unannounced. But I'm going to be hospitable to you. Now, let's say my wife offers you some coffee. You say, yeah, I'll take a cup. Oh, and by the way, could you put a little of your breast milk in it? 
Negro. That's how people get up. And number 10, finally. Now, we all know somebody that does this, or then done this, or something similar. Number 10. Now, my watch didn't come up missing, and all of a sudden you pop up with one just like it, talking about uh, you bought yours a long time ago. You just ain't been worried. See, that's how people get hurt. Now, again, this this might be you. It might be a family member or a friend or a stranger in the street, somebody you work with. But we all know of that one person that does things that you literally have to say to yourself, you know what, they must want me to hurt them. Because that's how people get hurt. Now, this next segment, of course, we're, we're going to bring this back here. Uh, and, of course, this is a, a, a very positive segment. Again, and, and when I do these things, I want to be a blessing and not a curse. I, I do them because I love you and I care about you, okay? And, and this right here, this this right here is, well, this is one that I truly feel um, needs to be uh, repeated because, again, there's some people out there that are just nasty. Nasty for no reason. They don't even realize they're nasty. Or, or they might realize they're nasty, but they just don't realize to what degree of nastiness that they're living in. So I'm going to help you out again. It could be you. could be a family member. could be a friend of the family. could be a co-worker or a stranger in the street. But now, if you observe somebody being nasty or living in a nasty situation or just doing nasty things or thinking nasty thoughts, point it out to them. Please. Get them on the right track. Again, here it is. You too nasty. Number one, you are too nasty. When you get out of the bathtub, the water's so dirty that you can catch catfish in it. You too nasty. You are too nasty. Your milk mustache smells like it's too nasty. You done wore the same pair of underwear so long that you can't even pull it off. They got to shave it off you. You too nasty. Your breath so bad when you burp, people hand you toilet paper and tell you to wipe your mouth. You too nasty. If you walk by a skunk and the skunk holds his breath, you too nasty. If your Christmas dinner has been made the day after Thanksgiving, you too nasty. If your belly button pierced with an onion ring in it, you too nasty. I'm going to help somebody today, and I'm not getting upset with you. I'm not mad at you. I'm just pointing out the fact that you're just too doggone nasty. Quit living nasty. It don't make no sense. I know you wasn't raised like that. Quit doing it, please. And, again, again, I, I'm, I'm helping people out today. I'm touching lives, and, and, and you know what? I'm getting people on the right track. So let's go here because, you know what, I, I, again, uh, I had a young lady that hit me up on Facebook and made a comment on Facebook. Uh, she actually messaged me. And uh, she made a comment about the uh, I'm a thug segment. And uh, she kind of mentioned uh, her living boyfriend. Uh, well, she seems to think that uh, several of the uh, I'm a thug uh, tendencies that I pointed out he exhibited, and uh, she uh, she wanted me to uh, uh, do it again because uh, she wanted him to hear it. So um, I'm going to do it just for you, okay? I'm going to call your, your name out, but I'm going to say it starts with an L, and you know who you are, L. All right, then. I'm a thug. Mm. Again. The thug could be you, could be a family member, could be a friend, could be somebody you work with, could be a stranger in the street, somebody you see at your local grocery store or just walking through the park. But as a man and a woman of God, you don't even have to be a man and a woman of God. Just as somebody with morals and decency for others, it's your duty to point out things and situations to people when they're acting like a thug or they're living or operating in thug situations. Again, here we are. I'm a thug. I'm a thug. I ran away from home when I was 36 years old. Number two. I'm a thug. Whenever my church has communion, I ask for a to-go box. 
Number two. Number three. I'm a thug. I took my driver's license test in a stolen police car. You know what? Go ahead. Uh, number four. I'm a thug. When I was 28 years old, my mama tried to whip me, and I told her, I ain't got no switches. Number five. I'm a thug. My driver's license picture has a picture of me in it eating a chicken leg. You know what? I don't believe it. I, I can't believe they stopped the picture with you eating a chicken leg. For your dri- that's just, I don't know where you went to get your driver's license picture taken, but that's just that. You know, it's probably not a legitimate license. I, 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 number six. I'm a thug. I graduated last in my class because I didn't trust nobody to be behind me. Number seven, I'm a thug. I went to the animal shelter to adopt a dog wearing a Michael Vick jersey. You know what? You's a thug for real. I can't even argue with that. That's a thug. Boy, you see, you're a super thug out for that one. I'm surprised you got out of there alive. Number eight, I'm a thug. I go to a buffet table, and I actually sit at the buffet table and eat. Wow. Yeah, that's a thug right there. Next, I'm a thug. I got a tattoo of a bullet hole on an actual bullet hole. Move right along. I'm a thug. I go to retirement homes and steal old people's teeth and give them jawbreaker candies to suck on. You know what? You're a cold-blooded thug. And finally, and I'm a thug, I'm a thug. I told my girlfriend's mother-in-law, you lucky I'm married. What the? You told your girlfriend's mother, you lucky I'm married. Yeah, you was a cold-blooded thug for that one, boy. You are super, you know what, you are super thug for that. Again, I'm not calling you a thug, you know, directly. I'm just saying, if you recognize any of these traits in you or somebody, you know, please point that out to, you, to them because, you know what, I want to help somebody. And the more people that I can reach and help, and the more people can go out and reach and help somebody else. It's just like a chain. It's like a domino effect, okay? Let's work together. Here we go. Now, you know, I always got to do it out of order. I always got to do it out of order. Why? Because there are some people living in situations that just don't realize how out of order they are. And, again, I want to be a blessing and not a curse. And the reason why the out of order has been a, a mainstay for me is well, quite simply, the outer order has, for me, been the most gratifying. Outer order has really changed some lives. It's really gotten some people in order. It's pointed out some things and caused some people to look at themselves in a different way to say, I want to be better. I want to change. I want to get my life in order. So here we go. I always don't give you some outer order. Lord Jesus, number one, you out of order if you do this. If you're shopping at the Goodwill for some sexy lingerie, yeah. Number two, you out of order if you do this. If you get in the prayer line at church and ask for your number to hit, Number three, you have to order for this. If you're at the Dollar Tree asking for a price check, you know what? Everything's a number four. You have to order if you do this. If you got a handicap sticker on your bicycle, number five, you have to order if you do this. If you pawn your TV, to buy a DVD player, you know what? The, you're not. What you gonna watch it on? What you gonna? Watch? You have to order if this is you. If your toes are longer than crayons, I, 
Nobody with toes that long needs to be in open toed shoes or sandals. You do A flip flop. Nothing. Nothing that where somebody can see your toes. Move right along with the outer order. Number seven. The outer order is this is you. If your breath is so stank that you can fight people with it. You know what? That's a strong. That's a strong scent. If you if you can back people up off you, which just by talking to them, you know. I mean, you don't want to stitch your shoe. If your belly button is so dirty, it looks like a giant mole. You know what? Come on, now. you don't want to stitch you. If your nose hair is so long, you can get it braided. And number two, Lord have mercy, out of order, if this is you. You out of order if this is you. If you spray Jerry Curl activator on your ball spot. Again, I, I'm trying to help some people. I'm trying to point some things out to people because uh, truly I, I feel that uh, as a society we need help. Uh, this is the, the worst of times. It really is. You got a president in the White House, and I won't go into that because I don't want to get all political. But if you voted for um, Donald Trump, you out of order. If you support him still, you out of order. And if you ain't thought at least one time about slapping the hell out of him, you out of order. Not to say I want you to do anything bad to the president. Just think about it. Don't put your hands on them that will send you to jail. You don't want that kind of problem. Put that disclaimer in there, and I don't want no lawsuits. Here we go. Uh, like I always like to do with the uh, program, I always like to close out with the church announcements. Why? And then you can do to stop me. But now, uh, again, the church announcements are not just for the, uh, the members who were not in attendance, but it's also for uh, some of the members that were actually in attendance at the service and may have missed something because they were so busy running their mouth and gossiping about uh, my outfit uh, or or my wife's outfit, okay, uh, a couple weeks ago at the uh, marriage banquet. First of all, you can talk about all you want to. Yeah, it might have been a little Tight, yeah, yeah. The dress might have been a little tight. That's my wife. That's how I like it. I like it tight like that. Yeah. And I know my pants might have been a little tight, but let me tell you one thing. That suit was on sale, okay? And I saved almost 70%. So, yeah, maybe it was a little tight. Maybe I had some some, some stuff bulging out that shouldn't have been bulging out. But I'm going to guarantee you this. <laughs> I, I, I ain't going to take it back because, again, I saved a lot of money on it. I was uncomfortable for a little bit. But, Hey, no pain, no gain. So you talk about me all you want to. It's about it's about my money. Don't nobody know my budget. Don't nobody know what we're dealing with. Okay, we cost cutting. Okay, I'm not gonna get it. Y'all not gonna wear my pressure. But anyway, uh, that's how rumors get started. But anyway, uh, like I said, let's go right into the uh, church announcement. Uh, now, of course, for you all that are unfamiliar with us, we are the Church of uh, Jesus Take the Will. I got the gas at the church. And we're small in number, but we are big on faith. I tell you what, we are small in number, we are big on faith. And we love the Lord just as much as the big churches do. Yes, we do. We just ain't got a whole big number. So it's it, 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 per capita. Our love is just as big as, you know, folks with ten and 15,000 members. So here we go with the church announcement. Church announcement number one. Uh, look here. Now, we don't mind you you, you, you asking for things and we, because the, the, the church don't mind giving and helping out and, and, and donating things and, and, and letting letting folks have stuff, you know. We we want to help people out and do for, you know, if people in need. But let me tell you this. Don't let me catch another person stealing Bibles out the church, okay? Let me let me find out who, who let me find out who stole the Bible out the church, okay? Let me find out who did it. 
<laughs> okay, you're supposed to leave with the word in your heart, not in your hands. So let me find out who. Let me let me catch another Bible walking out here to see what happens. Number two. Uh, look here, Deacon Patterson. Don't let me catch you in the baptismal pool no more but naked under your white robe. Now, look, I understand you you, you like helping baptize people, but you know you got to come correct. That was that, that that yeah that was kind of nasty. Now here we in the holy water, and, and you got the serpent out swimming in it, just hanging just hanging out. Be your serpent hanging out with your two pieces of fruit right there in the middle. Don't don't come like that no more, Deacon. Please, okay. So it's gonna be uh, it's it's gonna be something cut off. It's gonna be snakes in the drink. Thank you. Uh, number three. Look, Sister Sherry. Everybody know you got a husband now, but it's been three months. And besides, every week you always bragging about how you didn't found your husband and how y'all met. You found him at the courthouse. And it's funny that you you found your husband at the courthouse, but we can't never find him in the church. Hmm. 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 Start bragging on that. Thank you. And number four, uh, Mother Perline, now we're not accusing you of nothing. I know I'm not, okay? Uh, but what I will tell you is uh, uh, seeing is believing and the eyes don't lie, okay? Mother Perline, uh, why your lemonade that you made for last Sunday dinner, why was it so doggone bitter? Why was it so bitter, Miss Perlin? And, and 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 here's the thing: not only was it real bitter, but rumor is it is one of the ladies of the church saw you putting Epsom salt in the mixed greens that you brought. Mother Perlin, get your salts right. Separate your salts. Don't keep your, your Epsom salt and, and your iodized salt and your seasoned salt in the same doggone pantry because you're 97 years old. I see how easy it is for you to get confused. And I tasted it, too, and it was nasty. And it, it, it made my stomach hurt. You got all the people in the church just about sick and throwing up. Brother Perlene, come in here no more with no Epsom salt in your food or your lemonade. So somebody will get that weird head butted off their head. I'm not playing with you. Let me get sick again. Matter of fact, don't bring nothing else. You can't bring nothing else but an attitude to the, to the, to the Sunday dinner. You can't bring nothing else but an attitude. Thank you, Mother Pearlene. God bless you. We love you. You're a staple of the church. And finally, the building fund. And this is always one of the most inspiring announcements uh, because it gives me hope, and sometimes it discourages me. But all the day, <laughs> I see why our building fund has raised $1,500, over 1500 dollars Lord, have mercy. So that's what I'm talking about. When, when, when the members catch the vision of the pastor, it just you know that encourages me because y'all don't know. I, I need encouraging too, but for for y'all to do this with the small amount members that we have to have raised over fifteen hundred dollars for the building for y'all have cut the vision. Y'all are following the leader, the pastor. Y'all are trusted in his vision. And trust in his direction that he has for you and his congregation. And that makes me feel good. Oh, that swells me up with pride. And not a simple pride, but a, but a, but a pride of, of knowing that I have the right people behind me. Lord Jesus, that gives me strength. Y'all don't know what it does in my heart. It gives me the strength to keep on going. I can't believe it. Thank y'all so much. We are on the right path. Over fifteen hundred dollars for the building fund. In no time at all, we're going to be. <laughs> Wait, huh? What are you talking about? That's what it says. Over fifteen hundred dollars. That's what it says. I'm not. What? 
six billion funds over fifteen hundred. Wait a minute. I stand corrected. It says building fund total. And somebody's made a donation of fifteen hundred dollars to be paid over the next ten years. You mean tell me, y'all? It's gonna take you fifteen. It's gonna take you ten years to pay fifteen hundred dollars to the. What are you paying thirty cents a month? You son of a. You know, you know what? I, uh, you know what? I'm about to close this church. The doors is gonna be shut. Matter of fact, matter of fact, with the with the amount of money that's in the building fund, we're gonna ha- we're gonna hold the churches. You know, the church service will now be held off from from this Sunday on. The church service will be held in the back of my pickup truck because that's all we're gonna have money for. We 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 can't afford no more room. So buckle up. Next Sunday we'll be in the back of my pickup truck. It ain't no air back there. It ain't got no top on it, and it's gonna be hot. But I, I, I bet I'm going to be in the cab, me and the first lady, we're going to be in the cab. Yeah, with the air conditioner on. I'm sick of you. But I think, man, God is good. Well, you folks, I thank you all for being so patient and giving me another opportunity to reach out to you and help you. It can be a blessing and not a curse. As always, i like to close out with a prayer. Now, please, I ask you that you're Ears are bowed and all eyes are closed. Unless, of course, you're blind, then it really don't matter. Oh, Lord, we thank you for another Sunday with us with Dre. It may be a, a, a little late, but it was still right on time. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for how you open up doors that no man can shut. We thank you, Father God, for making a way out of no way, Father God. We thank you how you bless, how you bless, and how you bless. Thank you, Father God, that we was able to get out of Macy's, Father God, and um, they actually took that check, and it, and it went through. Father God, we thank you. Even though we don't believe the funds are there, somehow you made the way. Father God, most of all, we just thank you for loving us, protecting us, and keeping us. Until the next Sunday with more nuts with Dre, you all have a great week. And I love you. Why? Because I just choose to. What can wash away my sins and nothing but the blood of Jesus?